about culture. Uh, I will try to put some facts that are now happening in the world about the culture. And, and let me start with the uh, definition of what is culture. Culture is what the people does in, the, in his living, in his uh, work, in his family, and is uh, learned in, uh, since uh, young. And when they are, people are growing, they are uh, living the culture they learned at home. And uh, the world has different cultures because it has different religion, different economies, uh, different uh, education, different geography. So culture is what we do uh, in life. The most important is that we are getting a uh, globalization with the trading since the early 90s late 80s but we are also changing our culture for example the franchises that make uh, fast food or fat food uh, they are changing the habits of the people to to move to more calories uh, food because uh, maybe they appreciate the culture of the USA. It's something that the USA started to export by uh, the movies and TVs that were sending overseas. Okay, but uh, what I was telling you is about this the, the definition. And, and let me give you some examples of this. For example, uh, Coca-Cola is the most valued brand in the world. And it's easy to find it in one of the 200 countries in the world. And uh, not, a, not a good idea to be uh, drinking Coca-Cola every day, but many people is the only source of uh, liquids when they don't have potable water, so they drink Coca-Cola, and it happens in many countries. And also, if, if we take a look at the next slide, uh, we have uh, an example. If the world were a village with 100 people, 61 would be Asian. And of those Asian would be 20 Chinese and 17 India. 18 people were unable to read. And 33 people would have cell phones. 18 under 10 years of age and 11 over 60 years. This is very similar, the tops, the baron and the, and the top. There would be 18 cars in the village. There would be uh, 63 people with inadequate sanitation. 67 would be non-Christian. 30 would be unemployed or underemployed. 53 live with less than $2 a day. 26 people smoke. 14 are best. One would have eight. Uh, let me tell you what the uh, standard statistics say about the living with two dollars a day. Because from the American standard of economics, they say that two dollars is a poor people. Well, I, I live in China for one semester, and uh, and two dollars was an excellent amount for the Chinese poor people to have three meals and have a, a place where to stay. Why? Because China is so cheap that you can live with $2 a day. Maybe if we think uh, to live with $2 a day in Germany would be very difficult, or, or Sweden, or Finland, or Canada, and the US. So this is a, an example of how is the world right now uh, 
making our view of this uh, globalization. Well, we have something that we call acculturation. Acculturation. There is when uh, when people adapt to a specific culture other than one. For example, uh, when I was younger, when I was uh, in high school, I remember that all my uh, students, uh, all the students in school, especially women, uh, women were using uh, dresses or, or skirts, and men were using jeans. Now it's hard to see students using uh, skirts or dresses, all they use pants. And what happened? This is what we call acculturation because girls and women say there is more comfortable for them to use pants. It wasn't easy, no, it was not an easy step because when I started to use pants, many people say that they were using men uh, clothes. But now, 30, 40 years later, we see it like very normal. We see a normal girls using jeans, smoking, drinking beer, and doing many things that the culture uh, tolerates now in, in the West countries or the West part in Europe. I, I know it's alcohol prohibited in many other countries. Some mistakes that culture or, or no knowledge of culture has made is a, the very known example of Nike or Nike when they came with a new brand that it was called the the fire. If you see this, this photo has the logo here and has the logo here. And this, uh, these shoes uh, last something like one year in the market. Because if, if you see how they wrote, the word air for the, for this model, Air Nike, it's written here, Allah. So this word, Allah, looks like this word, Air. And here, in the sole of the, of the shoe, uh, you are stepping on Allah. So group of Muslims in the US mainly, started to protest and they had to retire all the juices from the market and about 800,000 and lose some money. Why? Because somebody didn't make his homework or her homework before coming to a shoes in a country that has something like terror all different cultures living together. So it's, 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 it's uh, now it's easier to do it, but they did it uh, without taking a look at that. Another example is uh, the myths we have about the religions. And these are monks from the Tibet that came to the US and they uh, stopped in a restaurant, a Danish restaurant, and they are having breakfast like every people. And uh, for some people to see this photo is something like, oh, they, they are losing uh, their religion, they, they are making a scene. No, they are becoming more global at, at the time. I have another example here about Japan. These uh, young people from Japan are dressed like Egyptians because they are making a theater presentation called Aida. 
So maybe some years ago, the Japanese wouldn't do that because they are one of the almost 100% cultures. But now they are open mind and they are making the presentation. And, and that talks about that. Culture is religion too, and marketing is present in religion too. Now we see people from from both sides, the people that believe in God and the people that doesn't believe in God, making their own uh, promotions of their own beliefs. That this would be very difficult uh, in other time. Now it's, it's an open to religion. This, this photo is in Pakistan. This is a promotion of this space called gate. But the case is that these children, they do not have any toothbrush. They only have the, the paste. So uh, why? Because they don't use it. And uh, more important is that for people in Pakistan, they don't care about uh, whitening, whitening the teeth because some teeth are yellow and are yellow because they eat nuts and they eat nuts because it's the source of protein when they don't have meat or they don't eat meat because of the religion. This is a popular brand in the world, the, the brand Guess, and arrives here to Vietnam, maybe for some donations. But this lady uh, still keeps her skirt in the original colors of the world. And then this, this kid is helping to make food with, with a pork here. We have also here the, the toys, a very popular doll in the world is called the, the Barbie. This uh, Barbie is almost in every country. But when they tried to enter to Muslim countries, it wasn't possible to enter like this. So they had to make a, a toy, a doll or a toy with uh, local and regional dresses to be successful. And they make the, uh, they, they give us the information that this guy is not like Ken here, is the brother of this girl. So, and then they, they can be selling the toys. Something that is, some people is taking advantage is to the, to the brands. This is the most popular brand in the US, the Oreo. And in Mexico, uh, a local company that is owned by Frito Lay, is not Mexican. Uh, when Oreo came to the, to the country to compete, they made this brand that is called the Oro. And for many people, they get confused between the two brands. Some people get confused between Honda and Hyundai because they look like, and one is Japanese and the other one is Korean, but they look like. And, and this is also a typical store in the, in the US for women's clothes. And somebody in Mexico came with this brand, the Unlimited, very similar, take in an advantage because again consumer can get confused with this. 
something very popular is Mexican food in the world. But we call it fake food. Like Taco Bell in the US is Taco Hell for Mexicans because it uh, looks like Mexican food but tastes like uh, American food. And they put it on the brand of the of the products. And and this one is the menu of a restaurant in Berlin, in Germany, that is called Tres Pesos. This means three pesos, and there is no coin in Mexico of three pesos. It's one peso, two pesos, and five. But they came with that name, okay, it's a brand. And um, I asked for a meal, and again, it was fake food for me. For the German, it was very fun because they were drinking Coronas and, and tacos. But for me, it was not similar even to, to Mexican food. So uh, something is happening here in the world that uh, people say they like the foreign food, but when it comes to the country, they have to make some adaptations. And sometimes it's because they don't have all the ingredients for the food to, to make it. So they have to, to take local products. I, I visited a restaurant in Lille, France, Mexican restaurant with Mexican people working there, but with French ingredients. So it looked like, but you need the, the source of the, of the food made it in the other countries where you are trying to do it. So you can find, for example, pizzas in the US and you try pizza in Italy and you want to find it's different. But you can like both, but the original is from, from, from pizza. I mean from, from Italy. Other problem with the brands, like the Nike, is the, the name of the brand. When the marketing people in the companies are not doing their homework and they just come with a name because it sounds well, for example, in Japan, and they, they, they come with, with this name for this car. Here it says, it says La Puta, and in Spanish it means mm -hmm. The prostitute, but in Japan sounds well, or in Japanese sounds well, because they, they come, but they have problems, they have to change the brands. Many, many brands from Ford, from uh, General Motors, and from Nissan, they have to change the, the brand when they go to another country. This is the, the Nissan, and it has the, the, the brand Moco, and Moco is, it's not, a, it's not insulting, but it's something we usually do it in private. And this is in Spain, Servicio de Hotelería Industrial. So they put only the letters and they call it chat. And there's, there's a problem also for these people. The champions of piracy are the Chinese. And take a look at the the one in the in the left. This one. It looks like two coronas, right? But it's not two coronas. One one is Serona, and this is the corona, the original. But many people don't even notice the difference and they are buying this this beer serona to drink a corona and this this is a problem for corona of course and corona has to make some uh, demands and whatever but it takes time if, if they get a solution they will lose part of the market this is also a chinese pepsi 
very similar. This is uh, office products that is called Paperboy, but they, they use the logo of Playboy and they were paperboy, so they look like this is Nike, but with the logo of Nike here, making products similar to Nike. And this is also Armani, that looks like very similar. There is Amoni, George Amoni. This is the original Starbucks, and this and these are similar. They look like many people can get confused. Mm -hmm. I guess this, <clears throat> they have already make a solution for this to change. They don't look like Starbucks because there are many Starbucks in, in, in China. And this is Kala Kala, uh, a cola product in China that is called Kala Kala. And so we have a lot of products on Kentucky Fried Chicken, on Pizza Hut, on McDonald's, there are also uh, taking an advantage of the look of the brands. For the piracy business, uh, in the case of jeans, Levi's is the most preferred brand for piracy. Why? Because it was the first one, has the big market, has a lot of advertising, mm -hmm. and people rather to buy uh, a Levi's. And uh, these two photos of Levi's, uh, I took them on a Tianguis in Mexico. That's a, a market mainly for used things, but some new, and piracy. Both pants are piracy. This is the logo of the social uh, security and health department of Mexico. Well, th this company, there is uh, alarms, it's an electronic company, they like it the law and just they took it because they took it from the internet and now they have the the the, the law of of social security there i don't know if this has much to do with piracy but uh, just to remind you that the u.s people and the Congress for, for, for gay Bill Clinton because he was a good president mm -hmm. and trying to make a separation between the presidency and the personal life. Clinton with Monica Lewinsky. When I arrived to China, there was a book of uh, Clinton, like a biography, in. 2005 and and was piracy of course they they had piracy of music videos and and, and books too and, and and let me show you not thank you not yet uh, let me show you um why sometimes if we don't take a look at the contextual background of some countries we're going to have problems to communicate, or we are not going to understand. If we see these countries, like UK, France, uh, the US, the Scandinavian Peninsula, German, and Swiss, these countries are in the low context. And this is explicit. When they speak, they go directly to the point. It means they are not going around giving you uh, many words to, to say something. They go directly to the, to the point. 
if you have seen a movie from the US, when there is a, a business with problems, they just call the employee and tell them you're fired. And maybe in these countries where they speak Italian, Spanish or Latin American countries, uh, Arabian and Japanese, we don't say you're fired. We explain that we have problems and we need to do uh, some arrangement because we are uh, shrinking in the company and the market and the finance, whatever, to finally tell the people you're fired. Because he, this, this, uh, uh, this group is implicit and it's, the emphasis is on the context. Uh, I, I mean, here the context is how much words are you putting on the information? For example, in Japanese, it's a problem with the lot of words they have to say before something. They changed some years ago between Japanese companies to move from Japanese to English to reduce the number of pages on the agreements. And, uh, and if you see a translation, maybe you have five pages of Japanese writing and you translate it to English and it becomes one page. So for business, it's better to have less pages, less information, but real information, not all the, the, the bluffing that comes in the implicit language, like layer language. Well, in the culture, we have also to be careful with the body language. Uh, all these signs here in the with the with the hand have different meaning in different countries. Maybe this is very popular and it means okay, but in Japan this means a threat. And for many countries this is number one, like Europe. Europe start, start counting with this, not with this. And, and this is also very popular for the sound of victory. But if you turn around the hand and you are in Australia, you're going to have problems because it means something very different. And uh, George Bush had this problem in Australia. The first time he traveled to Australia, he turned his hand on the other side and it was sending a, a wrong message. So whatever we understand for this hands signal, we have to take care of what it means in other countries. Because it's, it's very difficult to do the same signal if something is going to be wrong. This is very popular now, it's a heart from the singer here. And this is what I was telling you. This means number one for many people, but it's okay for many people. Mm -hmm. And here somebody took uh, advantage of the fried chicken. I don't know, it's a, it's a relative, but it's called Obama fried chicken. <laughs> okay. There, there is a lot of mistakes and there are uh, right now in the in the web that you can take a look just put marketing mistake in in Google and it's gonna take you to these uh, many many pages and and you can look here at the, in these pages and you're gonna find there is uh, uh, ridiculous mistakes that company is making, companies are making for not doing the homework, that now is so easy to do the homework. 
Yes, Google the word you are thinking as a brand, and yes, watch watch if it's not registered. Uh, I remember when we went to to Chile to Santiago, and we found we found that people uh, there were buying uh, a Mexican brand of bread. But the name of the bread was ideal. And and it was not called Bimo. And we find found out that, that this was because the competitor of Bimbo had registered the brand of Bimbo. So it it, it was not allowed Bimbo to use his own brand. Uh, the laws are dif different in every country. Some other countries you cannot use, uh, you have to use the, the brand that you, that you register, but not in Chile. And Chile has that problem with many, many brands that want to invest in. In Chile, they find, they found that the brand is already registered. So uh, in China, the legislation is very, poor in the in the meaning that you you want to make a register because the other is registered it takes a lot of time to do that because chinese people don't see piracy like something wrong they see piracy like normal to share according to the philosophy of them there is not a religion the, the philosophy of Confucius, and then uh, they they wanted to save some money instead of registering the brands. And uh, I remember when I was in China, the local singers were asking people not to make piracy of the Chinese songs they were singing. They could make piracy of the foreign song, but not the Chinese, because they were not making enough money. So it, uh, piracy affects everybody at the, at the end. And it's something that uh, they must uh, be ready to, to stop. And be, of course, very careful with the logos, like the one I showed you about Air Nike. They, they, it looked like the word Allah, and it was a big mistake and a loss of money for, for Nike. Uh, there is a myth that Tommy Hilfiger said that he, if he knew their Mexicans and Negroes were using his brand, he wouldn't have made it. And I, I spoke with him and I asked him about that and he told me it's totally false. I never been in the Oprah Winfrey show that was the good information. So who makes all this information? Well, the competition sometimes is the one that is making this information to uh, win some part of the market. And it's not easy to to defend and to erase that because once they made it, they made it and we have to live with that. Uh, it's a kiss in the cheek from Michael Gorbachev when the Berlin Wall fall. Uh, Michael Gorbachev made something that is called the Sinatra Doctrina, that he went to every country. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor, for a very interesting presentation. Folks, we are now open for question and answers. So if you have any questions, we can insert in the question box, or uh, we could equally raise the hand if you want to talk directly with the professor. So let me go to the first question. So, uh, Professor, how important is culture related to finance and marketing in the target country? Well, uh, for many companies, when they start 
uh, looking for business overseas, what they do first is a marketing study or marketing uh, penetration. They make uh, finance, economics, uh, even politics, but they forget to do the culture information of the country. So they take big surprises. For me, in my experience, I would put on first the culture of the country. How, how is the culture in terms of marketing, in terms of selling a product that I, that I have? Because uh, it doesn't matter the finance, the economy, and whatever, if the culture is not going to accept a product. So main thing is find out the culture of the country. Thank you very much. Uh, another one. Are countries willing to accept foreign cultures? It's hard to accept it at the beginning. It depends on the countries because when they have uh, neighbors that are already exchanging culture, it will be easier. Uh, I, I would say Canada and the US or France and Spain and Italy and Switzerland, they, they are neighbors and it's very easy. But when you try to get into an Asian culture with your products without doing a test market of the culture, it's going to be very difficult to, to penetrate there. You have to be very careful with the with the things that they want to tell about the product. Even when the product is already accepted, if it's a product or a service, then you come to the name. Are you going to use your local brand? Well, take a look at the meanings in the target country. What does it mean for people there? Maybe you have to change your brand and use a local brand to be identified for the consumers in that market. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor. That really brings us towards the end of the webinar. Any concluding remarks that you would like to give before we dismiss out? Yes, uh, I would tell them that uh, please don't forget to, to study the target market from the marketing point of view and the culture point of view. It's important to see the economics and the, and the finance, of course, but what would, wouldn't work if we don't have an adaptation. Culture is adaptable. People adapt to the, to the culture, but uh, not always works like that. Some people just don't adapt to the culture and, and, and because they don't like it. Well, thank you very much, Professor Ignatius. Once again, I really want to thank you on behalf of the Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship for taking the time to deliver this webinar. And thank you very much once again. And thank you all of those who attended. We are recording it. Please stay tuned to webinar.mile.org to learn about our upcoming programs, webinars, and to access the recorded version. With that note, I would like to end and conclude. So you all have a good day, good afternoon, good evening wherever you're calling from. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you.